Hi, this is Derek C. Moss, Professor of English and Interdisciplinary Studies at SUNY Potsdam. Welcome to A Deeper Dive into African American Literature, a daily series of short podcasts produced in conjunction with SUNY Potsdam's Celebration of Black History Month in 2021. Each day this February, we'll be looking at and listening to the work of an African American writer whose name may not be as familiar as Frederick Douglass, Zora Neale Hurston, Langston Hughes, or Toni Morrison. But these writers' contributions help give us a much fuller picture of Black artists' roles in shaping American culture. Episode 5, Jordan Anderson. Jordan Anderson's resume as an author is among the shortest you'll ever find, but his one contribution to African American writing has become increasingly relevant in the 150 plus years since it first appeared. He spent nearly the first 40 years of his life as a slave in Tennessee, but was set free in 1864 when Union soldiers occupied the Anderson Plantation on which Jordan had lived and worked for decades. Jordan and his family moved to Dayton, Ohio, where he lived for the remainder of his life. Not long after the end of the Civil War in 1865, though, he received a letter from his former owner, Colonel Anderson, inviting him to return to Tennessee and once again work on the plantation. The letter Jordan dictated in response to this audacious suggestion was soon reprinted in numerous newspapers and represents one of the first pieces of African-American satire. As such, his letter becomes a precursor to the grimly ironic comedy found in contemporary writers like Colson Whitehead or Paul Beatty, as well as in the social media circles known simply as Black Twitter. What follows are excerpts from Anderson's deliciously snarky letter to his former owner back in Tennessee. Sir. I got your letter and was glad to find that you had not forgotten Jordan and that you wanted me to come back and live with you again, promising to do better for me than anybody else can. I've often felt uneasy about you. I thought the Yankees would have hung you long before this for harboring Rebs they found at your house. Although you shot at me twice before I left you, I did not want to hear of your being hurt, and I'm glad you're still living. I would have gone back to see you all when I was working in the Nashville hospital but one of the neighbors told me that Henry intended to shoot me if he ever got a chance. I want to know particularly what the good chance is you propose to give me. I am doing tolerably well here. I get $25 a month with vittles and clothing. Sometimes we overhear others saying, them colored people were slaves down in Tennessee. The children feel hurt when they hear such remarks, but I tell them it was no disgrace in Tennessee to belong to Colonel Anderson. Now, if you will write and say what wages you will give me, I will be better able to decide whether it would be to my advantage to move back again. As to my freedom, which you say I can have, there is really nothing to be gained on that score, as I got my free papers in 1864 from the Provost Marshal General of the Department of Nashville. Mandy says she would be afraid to go back without some proof that you were disposed to treat us justly and kindly, and we have concluded to test your sincerity by asking you to send us our wages for the time we served you. I served you faithfully for 32 years and Mandy 20 years. At $25 a month for me and $2 a week for Mandy, our earnings would amount to $11,680. Add to this the interest for the time our wages have been kept back and deduct what you paid for our clothing and three doctor's visits to me and pulling a tooth for Mandy and the balance will show that we are in justice entitled to roughly $10,000. Please send the money by Adams Express in care of V. Winters Esquire Dayton, Ohio. If you fail to pay us for faithful labors in the past, we can have little faith in your promises in the future. From your old servant, Jordan Anderson. P.S. Say howdy to George Carter and thank him for taking the pistol from you when you were shooting at me. Follow the link at the top of this page to read a genealogist's research about the life Anderson lived after declining to rejoin his former owner. Check back tomorrow at the link at the bottom of the screen for another episode of a deeper dive into African-American literature. While you're there, you'll be able to find links to all of the previous episodes in the series, as well as links to booksellers from whom you can purchase these authors' works. And please, if you've enjoyed this series so far, help us spread the word. Thanks and gratitude go out to Clifton Harkham, Jason Hunter, and Alex Jacobs Wilkie at SUNY Potsdam, as well as to David Summerstein and Bonnie North at North Country Public Radio. Can you hear it? I can hear it.